Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Impact Defense Podcast, Season 2, Episode 3. three. Almost there. <laughs> Almost there. Before we dive into the episode today, don't forget our sponsor, Blackout Coffee. Now, sadly, we don't have their cups right now because we just came from the gym. Yeah, I'm not even drinking Blackout Coffee. I'm still on my protein shake from the gym, so (laughs) there's that. Yeah, but don't forget Blackout Coffee. You can pick some up by going www.impactgear.live slash coffee. And uh, also, you can use that coupon code, Impact Defense, to get you 10% off. If they don't already have a good sale going on. True. Okay, so I have a question for you, Kylie. As we get into today's subject, when you hear somebody, and I know you've heard somebody say this, what goes through your brain when you're talking about being aware of your surroundings and somebody says, no thanks, I would prefer not to live paranoid? No thanks? Yeah. Have you never heard anybody say that? No. Oh, yeah. It seems like every time we're talking about, or a lot of times we're talking about being aware of your surroundings, people try to say... That's paranoid. That's being paranoid. Yeah. So what, okay, then under the circumstances, what do you think? How do you, what did you, how would you respond to that? Um, There is a difference between being paranoid and aware. Just being aware of your surroundings just is like take extra notice of all the normal things that's going on. While paranoid is just like scared and like looking everywhere but like jerking, looking everywhere and always scared all the time. That's being paranoid. Yeah. I mean, if you're being paranoid, then you're constantly thinking that something is about to get you. Something yeah. is coming around the corner for you. While I was actually going to look up the is, definition. But. is really just like being aware of the normal. <laughs> right. Right. It's just trying to pay attention to things that are going on around you. I mean, it, it's really not living... Would you say that you are fairly aware when you're in public? Yes. Yes. Now, would you say that you are afraid that something is about to happen to you when we're in public? No. No. You know, it's, it's just completely different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know that some people can go from awareness to, to paranoia, paranoia. Yeah. but that's not what we're talking about. No. So first off, we need to understand the situational awareness is just being aware of all the things that are going on around us. Okay. Being paranoid is constantly afraid that something is about to happen. Okay. So what are some of the benefits of being aware of your surroundings? Um, noticing like all the normal things. That you didn't really notice if you were, like, constantly on your phone in public. Right. (laughs) So, like, if, and, say, if you're in a grocery store and there is an old lady that's trying to get to the buggy but can't get it, (laughs) you wouldn't notice that and you wouldn't. You wouldn't probably help that person if you were, like, stuck on your phone. You know, that's a really good point there, and I hadn't even really thought a whole lot about that, is the idea of having that ability to help someone, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the thing about, like, hey, you know, you might be in trouble, you know, if you're not paying attention. But, like, also just noticing the normal things that probably happen. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> on a regular basis. I think one of the best things I've heard when we had Michael Mann, that security expert, Michael Mann, on our podcast, one of the things that he spoke on was the fact that you're not necessarily looking for people or things that stand out because you'll always find those, but right. you're looking for things that are out of the normal when mm-hmm. you're actually talking about looking for problems. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting because most, most people that try to teach this stuff will try to say, you know, watch for the sketchy looking dude, you know. And I know that sometimes those stick out. Yeah. But but most of the time, they stick out because they're not normal. Uh-huh. And I think it's just that whole idea of looking. You know what the normal is in a certain area. Yeah. So you kind of like pay attention to things that are not normal. So how do you stay balanced? Like what, how, what do you do that keeps you balanced on the idea of I'm being aware, but I'm not going over the edge to paranoia? You know, um, I can tell a difference between when I'm just like kind of chill and like not afraid of my own shadow <laughs> so, <laughs> um, that's how I know whenever I'm being paranoid is mm-hmm. whenever I'm afraid of my own shadow and just like 
jerking my head around. Well, I think you're a good case study for this because you, you, it's been said, you know, mm-hmm. we, we know you've got some anxiety issues, you know, and different things like that. Uh, and I understand that completely. So I think taking you as the example in this situation where you can kind of catch yourself at times being yeah. a little bit paranoid yeah, over it's things. it's not until, like, I actually stop and think. This, ju- this goes as, like, with anxiety as well if i actually just stop and think why am i anxious right now Mm -hmm. and not just like constantly feel like like the i get i get like my i can tell whenever i'm anxious because my stomach is like it's like my stomach kind of turns gotcha okay in a way oh yeah yeah okay i understand that um so whenever your anxiety goes straight to your stomach yes my anxiety goes straight to my stomach um so I can tell whenever I am anxious and whenever I'm just like chill most of the time. And uh, if, I, if I do actually stop and think, why am I anxious right now? Do I need to really be anxious right now? Is there something to be anxious over yeah. that I'm just not aware of? Because yeah. um, a book that uh, you actually recommended me to listen to uh, was, uh, it said that anxiety is just kind of like an alert system. That something your body is saying that something is wrong, right? And you're doing everything to try to shut off the alarms. And when you have anxiety problems, it's when you have like all these alarms that are keep going off without, without reason to. Yeah, without basically. reason to. So yeah. But whenever you actually stop and think about all those stuff, like why <laughs> am I anxious right now? Then most of the time you can figure it out, and then go out the rest of your day being happy and. So, yeah, Person. and that what she's talking about is, um, is two really good books. If you have anxiety problems, I highly recommend them. It was Redefining Anxiety mm-hmm. and also Living a Non-Anxious Life. Both of those are by Dr. John Deloney. Uh, we will link those in the description as well. So mm-hmm. go check those things out. You can get those on at, at Amazon. You can get them on, on Audible, which I think is what you listen to them with was Audible. So, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, it's really good. So whether you prefer to read or listen to audio books or whatever, uh, taking in books is a great thing and, and many things. But anyway, we're getting off subject now. Yep. <laughs> so, what are ways that you can enhance your awareness? We've had a whole podcast on this. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, if you're right here and you're wondering about that, we did a whole podcast on that, uh, on just that one thing. And it's really good and, and ways to help with your kids and everything, too. Uh, so there's all kinds of little games you can play. I would highly suggest go back and check that episode out. But we did do a whole episode on games that you can play. We did uh, a whole, yeah, we did TikToks and a few other videos on that as mm-hmm. well. So there's there's things, resources out there even that we've put out. And, and there's resources that you can also find that talk about different ways to help yourself and help others uh, mm-hmm. with their awareness. And it might be time for an update to an episode like that at some point. Yeah. So. So what are things that can uh, maybe trigger paranoia in, let's say like for you sometimes, you know, you have, you said you have anxiety. Uh, So what are some things that can trigger some of these moments of going overboard and being paranoid instead of just being aware? Um, it's kind of like a hard question for me. Yeah. (laughs) Cause from where I got my anxiety from is a whole lot different. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I understand that. Your your anxiety started over a car wreck that you and your mother was in, a yeah. really bad car wreck. I guess I, well, maybe my next question is this. So it could be different for different people. There could be all kinds yeah. of different triggers. Some people it could be something that, like you, it was a traumatic event. Uh-huh. So yeah, something trauma. that might uh, remind you of your past trauma mm-hmm. might be something. But my next question is this, and this is super important, and I'm very interested to hear it from you. (laughs) Do you think that avoiding anything that might cause that is going to help you? Uh, um, See, the thing is kind of hard to avoid stuff like that. Yeah, no matter what your past trauma was. Yeah, It, uh, it seems like it just always shows up. Especially whenever you, like, least expect it. Yeah. It shows up. But because of life, you can't just avoid stuff like that. It's, right. It's, it's all a part of the journey. You just got to push through it. Because I think uh, a lot of people uh, 
kind of back to the anxiety thing, uh, will basically treat that as it's their label. Yeah. Which, whenever you have anxiety, you shouldn't just stop because something reminds you of what triggered the anxiety in the first place. Right, right. You shouldn't stop. Now, you shouldn't put yourself in an unsafe position, but I think it's better if you push through a situation in a safe place Yes. uh, while still working through that. Because I think if you just step back, uh, you're going to experience paranoia a lot more if you just kind of withhold yourself from any kind of situation that might trigger that at all. Like I said, pushing through a situation in a safe place is going to mm-hmm. help you out tremendously. Like for me, my I for some reason, I don't like doing anything in front of people, which mm-hmm. is really weird considering that I teach like little kids, like yeah. ages three to six, whose parents are always watching. <laughs> um, but when it's anything like outside of karate, like even at tournaments or uh, just recently I got into youth worship team, um, it's just like anything that like involves outside of karate that I have to do something in front of people. It's just like, ugh. <laughs> yeah. it's like it's on, but I do it anyway. Yeah, I do it anyway because I can't just stop. Right, you can't Whenever. stop living, and if you stop yeah. living, then you definitely will not. Whenever you reach let anxiety the heights that you want to reach, just whenever you let anxiety just take control of your whole life, then you're basically living in darkness. Right, you're living in your own self pity, <laughs> mm. in a lot of ways, which yeah. is why I'm thankful that even though that I did have anxiety problems, you're the one. <laughs> That pushed me to do things that got me outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. And I think that's made me a better person overall. Well, I'm glad because <laughs> I love you and that's my goal is to is kind of help you I know. in that respect. But I think that's just a lot of the issues with anxiety today is just they, they treat it as if it's like their label, their lifestyle. Completely crippled. Yeah, completely crippled. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, our whole goal... In all of this is, and, and we kind of got not really off subject, but kind of a peripheral subject, you know, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I but, feel it, like but it is very connected. It's very, yeah, uh, it's very like important. Paranoid and anxiety kind of come hand in hand. Yeah, especially in a lot if you of ways. get your anxiety from a past trauma. Yeah, type deal. But the thing is, we need to focus on being aware of the mm-hmm. things that are going on around us without crossing over that line and like you said when you find yourself kind of crossing over that line we need to you know be self-aware enough Mm -hmm. to kind of back up and pull rein things in a bit all right guys if you enjoy this podcast uh like subscribe and share it with your friends because over the whenever we were absent for six months we've kind of dipped so be sure to share us with your friends (laughs) um And also write a review or write down in the comments wherever you're listening or watching and tell us how you liked it. Any comments or suggestions or suggestions of other episodes, anything Mm -hmm. you might like to hear. Uh, Thank you again very much for listening and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.